Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Zochil Torres Small, Undersecretary for Rural Development at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for having me and for having these incredible conversations uh, that are truly inspiring. It's an honor to be a part of a sub summit with such a noble uh, mission. Concordia's work recognizes that you can't have social impact without impactful partnerships. And since rural development's partnership relationship with Concordia and is a new one, I'm excited and looking forward to it becoming one of those impactful partnerships. Most partnerships start with an introduction. So hello, I'm Sochil Torres Small. I'm the new Undersecretary for Rural Development. And I chose this job in rural development because before I was a uh, United States representative for a district in New Mexico, I worked on water in New Mexico. And that's meaningful because we all know that water is life, especially when you live in a desert. But it matters everywhere. No matter where you are in our world, water is life. And I don't think there's a stronger statement on equity than if you can drink clean water or flush your toilet safely. And unfortunately, there is a lot of inequity in our world, in our nation, and here in Kentucky. Rural development is working with many partners to try to take on this challenge as well as others. But one of the difficulties with water, especially setting up a drinking water system, for example, is that a fundamental part of that is trust. In order to build a system, you have to be able to not just pay for building it, but also the maintenance that will keep it working long into the future. And that means people have to sign up for that service. And in some places, it means you're asking people to trust a government who has let them down for generations. I recently came from Alabama, where a rural development employee was working on addressing just that. He was trying to get people to sign up for a drinking water system service. And he was going door to door to convince them. One woman almost threw him out. She said, I have been drinking from that well my entire life. No one has helped me so far. Why would I trust the government to do it now? And so he sat down with her, and he listened to her. And eventually, he convinced her to let him get her water tested. And when the results came back, the technician asked if the sample was from a septic tank, because it had so much bacteria in it. Now, thankfully, that woman trusted the rural development employee. Thankfully, she's now able to get good, clean drinking water. But that's what one, that's how much it can take to earn back the trust of just one person. And rural development and all of us are trying to build, rebuild that trust across not just people, but communities and between each other. So while I'm eager to tell you about the type of work that rural development does, and our role in the infrastructure, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law, which is historic, and it's going to establish much needed ongoing capacity building. That's what I'm the most excited about, is how we can explore with you how those brick and mortar investments through technical assistance can help expand long time capacity in communities. Through our loan and grant programs, rural development supports the vision of the people who live and work in American small towns and counties. We help with infrastructure, from water to broadband, with community facilities, from hospitals to schools, with housing, both single family and multifamily, and with economic development projects that include support for small businesses. It also means taking a path going on a journey with communities, one that might start, for example, with a rural development economic development plan. Uh, I recently came from Franklin, New Hampshire, where as I was going there, someone said, why are you going to Franklin? Nothing good comes out of Franklin. That's changing, though, because they invested in, they worked with rural development to put together an economic development plan. And they grappled with their history as an old mill town uh, that was uh, supplying power through the Winnipesaukee River. They knew that they were there because of the river. And they wanted to be there still because of that same river. 
So with water quality improvements, they were able to also make it a recreational opportunity, turn it into a kayaking spot. It attracted a local business on Main Street to do that work. And because of that economic development plan, they also started looking at housing opportunities, investing early in income, low income housing, as well as multiple options for living. When I was there, it was to uh, cut the ribbon for a solar facility that was going to help power their community. But that's the journey that you can go on. That's the difference between a plan that sits on a shelf and a plan that is owned by a community. So we're there to help things go right, but we're also there when things go wrong. During the pandemic, our agency made sure that rural Americans had an advocate, particularly when it came to housing, whether that was foreclosure moratoriums, forbearance, payment deferrals for community facilities loan programs, or investing in distance learning and telemedicine so that people could get access to health care from their homes. COVID-19 taught us a lot. It certainly highlighted some of the challenges that we now have to prioritize in a different way. I think all of you know one of the biggest ones, investment in broadband. That was brought into sharp focus by the unprecedented need for distance learning and telemedicine. Our ReConnect program has increased the importance and purpose now, and we've seen how powerful, how essential connection is during times of struggle. I am deeply proud that in this last uh, round of ReConnect, we had more applicants than we had the previous two rounds combined because people know how important it is and people are working together to make it happen. Now, we're there in times of struggle, but we also have to look beyond the struggle. I was recently in southeastern Alaska talking with an Alaska Native village who was working closely with an Alaska Native corporation. Now, that's not something you hear too often. Often, there's a struggle, there's a competition for power, but they realized that, that competition wasn't benefiting anyone. So they started working together. And by working together, they built a voice that was no longer asking for help, but was inviting people in and saying, if you're going to show up in our community, this is how we want you to show up. They said, we don't just want funding to fix this one challenge. We want to look towards, as we solve any given problem, making sure that we're also getting ready to solve the next problem. That's community capacity. It's not a Band-Aid, but a bridge, connecting powerful elements that are already there in the community. But here's the thing. Programs only work when they can be accessed. I know I'm in a rural community when I'm in a room full of people who care deeply about the place they love, but not a single one of them is a grant writer. That's why our implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law will include as much capacity building and technical, technical assistance as we can manage. And this is something where we can partner with the nonprofit sector. You can help us make sure that rural communities have access to concrete technical assistance, things like grant writing, like planning, and post-award management support. We're eager to engage with philanthropic partners who want to make those things happen. Building capacity is how we will make sure that rural communities aren't missing out on the opportunities now or the opportunities in the future. So I want to thank you all so much for having me today, but even more for being here today. It's a pleasure to share with you an, over, an overview of rural development and the ways that we can best work together. I'm excited to share this, this vision and innovation of the wonderful people we support in America's rural communities. I look forward to working with you as partners with IMPACT. Thank you.